Everybody got the spot they wanted. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's a, there is a spot up here mm -hmm. to the front. Steve. Excuse me, Denise. I need to grab some hips and there. If I can find that. Thank you everybody for uh, making it out here today um, and joining us. Um, can I get a show of hands? Who has been to any of the previous workshops that we did? Only Tom, not someone here is me. Okay, wonderful. Um, so, Oquesimo uh, and I have uh, been working as consultants here at the Food Mill. I've been here for three years. And a place Mill has been here uh, off and on for about that 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 much as well. So we're, we're gonna get started now. Okay. And uh, you gotta excuse like the decibel level because we're kind of still in an open an open store, so there'll be people talking. I'm gonna try to ride over them as best I can. But uh, yeah, um, basically. Uh, we're excited about Tonic Herbs because we believe in what they can do for you and, and everyone, for that matter. And uh, they have definitely transformed our lives over the, over the years. Um, my um, interest in Tonic Herbs started back in 2004 when I started going to J JFK. Um, and then getting into Amazon Herbs, getting into Chinese Herbs, Ayurvedic Herbs, kind of incorporated them into my diet uh, a little bit at a time and then more and more and more. And uh, it's been a pretty exciting journey. Who here uses tonic tonic herbs? Okay. Any any favorite ones that you you want to say real quick? Any, any favorite tonic herbs of yours? Do you like? Oh well, I take a lot of products from Apex Energetics. If, you, if you've heard of it. No, no. Uh, and and they do their own formulas and they're full of tonic herbs. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you know a lot of adaptogens. No, just, a lot of adrenal yeah. support mm -hmm. stuff. Also, brain formulas. Okay. Like I love Apex. Like Ashwagandha's okay. one, yeah. Oh. Sure. <laughs> yeah, just a little disclaimer. We're basically uh, ed educators. We uh, come about this not as like therapists or like doctors. Mm -hmm. We just intuit information. We experiment with, with different products. We experiment with different formulas. We make our own formulas. As you see, there's some being brewed up here for you guys later on. And we just basically uh, take from our experience and give it back to you guys. It's kind of like the way the Taoists used to walk through the forest, and you know, the plants would talk to them, you know, basically, and they would an animal would eat them, and now there'd be an observation made, and an experiment would be made, and then people would try it, and it, it would work. So that's kind of our approach to this. So there's basically like three primary tonic herbal systems. There's more than three in general, but three that are really comprehensive and tracked. Um, my, my specialty is the Chinese tonic herbs because they've been documented for over 3,000 years. And the fact that they've been written about and, and tracked so diligently is easy to keep up to date on the, on the formulas and what's out there. Uh, the Ayurvedic system is pr pretty advanced too. Uh, I wish I knew more about it, but I, that one is just, at this point beyond beyond reach for me. But I started with South American herbs, and I was really excited about some of the herbs they were, they were putting out there um, ten, 10 years ago, and that was kind of my, my initial entry point. But now Chinese tonic herbs are definitely the ones that I'm gravitating to and really excited about. There's about like 40 super tonic herbs. And my, my goal uh, in my incarnation on this planet is to get every person on the planet like using like the top 40 herbs that are available to us on this planet. Out of, out of these uh, 40, about 20 of them are associated with Chinese tonic herbs. Although the Chinese will take herbs from other cultures and they'll incorporate them to their system. But just for the sake of like description, I'm, I'm calling them Chinese, although not all of them are Chinese. And anyone who leaves their email with me will get, a, uh, will get this uh, PowerPoint email to them along with the YouTube link to this presentation. So, you, I mean, they'll be, uh, you know, you have that if you wish. So there's basically, uh, I think, seven lessons uh, that Tonic Herbs have taught uh, a lot of us. This, this is from uh, Ron T. Garden's Ancient Wisdom of Chinese Tonic Herbs. 
So he basically uh, put six out there. Um, and I, I added uh, this one here, support is always available. So when you get deeper into these herbs, you'll find out whatever you're going through, whatever challenges you have in your life, they will help you overcome those challenges that much more easier and they're there to support you through all your endeavors, intellectual, emotional, financial, whatever, whatever it is that um, you're going through. And definitely, they do teach you that love is everything. They, they tune your, uh, how would I say, your, your glands. That's, well, there's a, more of a metaphysical way of saying it, but I'll just say it for the sake of simplicity, your glands to uh, the broader cosmic love system we're all part of. Without, without getting too mushy. So, there's three, three numbers in this presentation that I want you guys to kind of keep in mind here. So the, the two of the polarity, the yin and yang, uh, the three treasures, uh, just think of the trinity here that's, that kind of correlates to all of this, and then the five organ systems. So since most of you are new to this, I, I, I've done this before here, and I'm glad you guys have not seen this because this is my, one of my favorite parts of this presentation. Because if you can grab this, this is a foundation for you to uh, learn a lot of other things from. So you guys kind of get, get the gist that our brain is divided into a right, a right and left, right? Mm -hmm. And so that attunes us to different energies, the yin and the yang, the, the salt, the sugar, the night and day, past and future, the outer and the inner. So, how many of you guys ever like uh, considered, maybe maybe you already know this, but considered when you're at work, that's kind of more of a yang energy, right? You're kind of constricted, you're concentrating, you're, you're, you're under deadlines. And then when the weekend comes, if you don't work on the weekends, that's kind of yin time, right? You're playing, you're relaxed. You're kind of more open to, to go with the flow, you're off, you're off schedule. So uh, the breathing in and breathing out process attunes us to this expansion and contraction. Wait, breath out is yang. The breath out, okay, so when I'm speaking to you, I'm, I'm actually in yang mode. When you're listening, you're in yin mode. Oh, sure. Yeah, so like basically it's like, Reception and like uh, projection. You, you know, there's different ways of saying it. But this is a constant, a constant interplay that you want to have in balance. So, in Chinese like herbalism, but just in herbalism in general, there's something called three treasures: Jing, Qi, and Shen. And the, to use an analogy of a candle, the Jing is like is like the wax of the candle. Uh, the chi is the fire and the shen is the light. The reason to use tonic herbs ultimately is to have a good light about you, a good spirit. That shen and spirit mean one and the same. But you can't really, you can't skip the, the wax, right? Because you're not going to get much candle fire if you don't have a lot of wax um, in the candle. So with, with these herbs, you want to start with the jing herbs because they, they create the base foundation. And so this is a uh, Masonic uh, work of art, and basically there's a sun, the star, and the moon here. And this correlates uh, to the three treasures as it does to the, to the trinity and everything else. So the number three uh, is a very powerful number. If you can work with all the different analogies that it represents in, in reality, you can actually um, have fun with it. You know, it's really interesting where that can take you. So like the sun representing the spirit, that's where the ladder is pointing to the sun in, in, that, in that regard. <coughs> so uh, here's some other, other examples. Um, so what I'm trying to get people to do by consuming these tonic herbs is to be able to synchronize their hemispheres of the brain, the right and the left, to bring them in a more uh, centered state of contemplation. Just to use um, kind of a, a rough example, in, in the U.S., people tend to be uh, overly left brain. They're they're too much into concentration mode, right? Uh, it's called being too pens too pensive. Uh, and so maybe like in India, people are too much into meditation. Maybe they're not. But just for the sake of example, as as a, as a visual, so uh, there's not enough concentration, too much meditation. So what? 
we're trying to do here is to bring people to a state of contemplation where the concentration and the meditations merge together. So what you will find as you get deeper into tonic herbs, these herbs help you to bring you into a state of contemplation. Any, any questions on this or is this visual kind of speak for itself? Yeah. Alright, so tonic herbs, the difference between medicine and tonic herbs are they're safe to use every day. So basically just like you eat your protein, carbs, or fats. So also in our diet we have foods that are uh, yin foods and yang foods. So this is not a judgment of whether or not these foods are good or bad for your diet. This is just, they're just examples, energetically speaking, what they do in the body. Okay, so for example, you go out to dinner, you have beef, right, and then you want some ice cream afterwards, right, because your body is, goes into yang mode, it gets off balance, it gets contracted. So salt is the ultimate yang substance, sugar is the ultimate yin substance. You get too much salt, now you want sugar. You get too much sugar, now you want salt. So it's, you're constantly having these cravings going back and forth, you're trying to fight that, find that uh, kind of equilibrium. Green, green foods, green leafy foods, green juices like uh, wheatgrass, those are right in the middle. Like right in the middle. That's why when someone's like detoxing, they're doing a lot of greens because they're not swinging from the polarities. They're right in the middle. So like celery, cucumber, these are very much uh, almost as down the middle as you can get, uh, energetically speaking. So you're, you're not having cravings. Um, yeah, for me, like coffee is a major yin, is my major yin food to balance out, you know, the cheese and coffee thing. That's just like that is ultimate, like cheese and coffee for me. That's like the ultimate combination. Does anybody have a favorite yin and yang combination? Yeah. Erica, what's your favorite yin yang? Coffee and something. Coffee and, and okay. yeah. I thought coffee. I always thought coffee was yang. Um, coffee. Coffee is, is not is not yang energetically. Um, yeah, it's basically right because. I mean, where's alcohol? Yeah, alcohol. Alcohol. alcohol that's why people have like when they eat like a salty fish, they want like a liquor. Mm -hmm. You know, salty fish and liquor. Oh, there's yeah. alcohol. Yeah, okay. a lot of these things because um, the yin foods they kind of do stuff for that for like di digestively speaking. The, to offset like the heaviness of what's going on here. So if you have like uh, grains, for example, uh, then you might crave like you know um, coffee, like like the bread, like the like the pastry, and and the coffee, for example. But the effect of coffee, I'm just curious. Yeah. Interesting how like the coffee, the effect often of a coffee. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is is has a contracting quality. Contracting. So yeah. Can you say something about like the the food is different from Maybe the the yeah. That it so like on, as far as like on the blood vessels, it's it's a vasoconstrictor, right? right? Right. So it's it's basically, yeah. Like that. That's actually one of the one. You know, you want to offset coffee with things that go the opposite way when you're when you're eating. And that's like for example, chocolate and coffee. Chocolate, cacao is a vasodilator. So that's kind of like you know. But yeah, that's uh, you're, you're right. There's a d difference between. There's a distinction to be made there. So we got the five, the five primary organ systems here. We're going to be focusing on the spleen and the lungs. And uh, the five primary org organ systems are, are not just or physical organs. They're actually uh, processes in the body that are also kind of invisible. Um, they're, they're creating uh, reactions um, on a spiritual level inside of you. They have um, elements associated with them that actually, you know, tie into broader astrological uh, aspects. So, for example, uh, it's good to have all five flavors every day: sour, salty, bitter, spicy, sweet, because each each organ system has an affinity for a different flavor. So, you never want to get rid of sweets. You just want to have the right ones. You want to have like honeys, fruits, um, you know, coconut water, stuff like that. Because if you Try to get off sweets, and people say, oh, I'm going to get off sweets because sugar is bad. Well, yeah, refined sugar, dead sugar is bad for sure. But if you get off sweets, you're going to throw off this organ system. 
right? You're gonna have some spleen, some spleen issues going on there. But if you get off salt, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, getting off salt is dangerous for the kidneys. The kidneys require salt. It's not. You want to get off the like the Morton's salt. You want to get off the death salt, like the table shirt, the table salt at Denny's. You you want you don't. What you want is the salt that's in there, the Himalayan salt, the Celtic, you know, the Celtic sea salt, the good the good stuff. So um, yeah. So each of these organ systems has has a flavor and has an element. And these are considered the the, the yin organs because they're, they're solid, right? So the earth is solid. The heavens above are expansive and hollow. So these organs are all hollow. The stomach, large intestine, gallbladder, urinary bladder, small intestine, these are the hollow organs. So this represents the yang organs. So basically, these are, these are, this is like the general of the army. And this is like, kind of like the, cap, the captain to that general, so to speak. So the spleen organ system. So this is a fascinating organ. Um, you're talking about both immunity and digestion because you're talking about the lymphatic system, which is where your, your white blood cells, your immune system cells, travel through your lymphatic, lymphatic fluid. And lymphatic fluid is created uh, by, by the spleen, or it contributes to the creation of it in a major way. So the spleen draws chi out of the food and puts it in the, in the, in the blood. It generates uh, your saliva it helps generate blood and helps generate chi. And uh, <coughs> overall fluid uh, distribution, the spleen is a major player in that. So, how many know of women, um, let's say over 50, that have experienced uh, pro prolapse? Pro okay. What is prolapse? Prolapse is when the uterus and other organs associated with it, they're, they're, they dip down through the pelvic bone. They're not, they're not stable. Oh. Um, so this, this is <laughs> what it was. <laughs> I thought you meant, uh, oh, so, but prolapse can happen with other organs. Other like, organs, yeah, yeah. Not that, just uh, yeah, that, it, can, it happens probably <laughs> to, to, if someone lives long enough, they'll probably experience it at all levels, mm -hmm. you know. But generally speaking, that's the one you hear, like, those, those lawsuits on TV about, about the mesh. Have you seen those lawsuits? Yeah, about like, because doctors will basically try to put mesh in, into women to keep their organs in place. I don't know if you guys have seen those, those commercials. Yeah, they And then they, now there's like all kinds of lawsuits about that. That's basically tied to, at the, at the base level, the spleen, is, the, the spleen is off. The spleen is kind of the central fugal uh, force of the body that keeps everything um, in, in, intact. Mm. It's tied to muscle tone and muscle tightness. So flabby muscles um, are tied to spleen deficiencies. The spleen uh, keeps blood in the vessel. So if someone has blood in their stool or anywhere, their internal bleeding, it's, there's going to be a spleen plus most likely problem. Uh, lip, lip fullness, texture, color. This, if someone's lips are looking off, there's going to be a spleen uh, connection to that. Did I, did I miss anything else in the spleen? Those are the, the, the highlights. Hold on. Did I miss any other highlights? Yeah, I'll get into that. Okay. All right. So, so also the the lung organ system uh, is in charge of physical energy. That's why the the lung herbs uh, like the cordyceps and some other ones are basically are tied to why a lot of the Chinese win a lot of gold medals in the Olympics because the athletes in, from China they know how to use tonic herbs. And they use the lung tonic herbs, and that allows them to get more energy from the oxygen that they're taking in. So, uh, so if you're if you're an athlete of any kind, you want to get into the into the lung herbs to help you uh, with your performance. Also, uh, the lung organ system is tied to mastering your emotions. Basically, anytime your emotions are out of line, if you're angry, you're sad, you're not you're not breathing. You're not breathing. That's that's the baseline. You're not breathing. Once your breath is in control. Everything is just cool, right? Everything just cools down. So, uh, the lungs that are functioning well will have somebody breathing well. Also, uh, the lungs are considered the seat of wisdom because with breathing, there is more there is more wisdom in your choices, and the metal element is associated with the lungs. And the metal element is tied to transforming your experiences into wisdom, so you don't you don't repeat the same uh, mistakes over and over again. 
let's see here. Um, the skin, so eczema and asthma. They're like right, right here with one another. If someone has eczema, there's, there's going to there's gonna be a lung disturbance somewhere. If someone's having um, al al allergies, um, uh, they're like asthma, tied to the lungs, they're going to have a skin issue. Right? So there's a, because the lung is, the lungs are dispersing chi throughout the body, right? All the extremities, uh, the lungs are responsible for getting uh, nutrients from the air and nutrients from the food into, into the, the outer layers of, of your body. The lungs produce something called uh, defensive energy, wei, wei qi, right? This protects you from cold, dampness, and, and wind. By why people get, um, and the lungs are the first um, entry point for any pathogens, right? Because you have your respiratory system, um, your, no, your nose, uh, your mouth, it's tied, it's tied to the lungs. Uh, there's a lot, a lot of things going on that the lungs are, for, well, my, my dad, he, uh, he passed away in uh, 2013, and he, he had a, a, his fourth stroke, he was 79, so he was, that's blood, blood vessel constriction, right, too much yang, too much yang. And when he was in the hospital, um, you know, unconscious for uh, three weeks or so, he got a, a, a virus in his lungs. He got pneumonia. And basically because um, he wasn't moving, right, basically he couldn't fight the virus. Because you need movement to fight viruses, right? You need movement to fight if it was moving. And uh, also lungs are tied to uh, grief and alienation. So if someone is alienated or if they're grieving, or they're sad, um, they're gonna, their lungs are going to be vulnerable uh, to uh, vi viruses. Or, or sadness will make the lungs more vulnerable to viruses. So either, either which way. So there's a, uh, all these organ systems are tied to an emotional uh, connection. Uh, the spleen is tied to, um, if someone is, is overanalyzing, overthinking, being too pensive, pensive I think is the word, uh, then they're going to have, uh, that's going to affect the spleen, right? You just can't get rid of that that thought. They're like, they have an assignment, they just can't let it go, they're just, they're stuck on something. So there, there's a mother-daughter relationship between the lungs and the spleen. So the lungs take food, food chief from the spleen and disperse it throughout the body. So basically, uh, so the, the spleen uh, removes the chief from the food and the lungs then carry it out through, through the, the extremities. So now getting into some of the uh, herbal delivery systems. I'm going to just get some tea right quick. Does any, <laughs> does, um, anybody have any questions that are okay? Yes. Okay, so these are all great ways to get these herbs into your body. I put the ones in, in red, red because I feel like they're like untapped sources that people ain't fully u utilizing enough for getting herbs into their system. So water, of course, that's kind of a typical way. Alcohol is probably the, the, the second most common way. Alcohol is a great delivery method for herbs because al alcohol is fast soluble, so it penetrates into your membranes without going through your GI tract. So you're not, you're not losing uh, things in the process. Unfortunately, people are, are using alcohol not as a liver system, they're trying to use it as a nutrient, which is not a good idea. <laughs> it's like if the pizza man comes to your house, you want to eat the pizza, not the pizza man. You know? as, as an analogy. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> Chocolate, chocolate is one of the most untapped delivery systems that there are for herbs. There's a company called Sacred Chocolate that's putting a lot of neat herbs into their chocolates. I don't know if you've seen those little hearts around. They're not uh, good earth and fair fact sells them. But because uh, cacao is a vasodilator, so anything you put in your body with chocolate, it's going gonna, it's gonna to pump through your system faster because your blood vessels open up. That's why like, uh, the, people, the longest living people uh, that are documented are often chocolate eaters. Like there's a woman in Mexico who's like 128 right now, and they asked her like, What's the, "How did you do it?" Chocolate. Like, <laughs> but we're not talking. But it's like the good stuff. It doesn't have like it's not overly processed. It's um, you know that woman in, from France who lived to like 122 recently. She passed away to like like pounds of chocolate, you know, a week. You know, it's just you know. So it's a good. That's good news. That's good news. 
Yeah. That's why chocolate is good for the ticker, you know, for that reason. Alright, um, so those are things you put the herbs in. You put the herbs in, yeah. Like honey is one of my favorite, like I go through about a pound of honey a week, because I'm putting like a lot of stuff, like any powdered herbs are going to, into my honey jar, and then I just get a spoon, I just dig, dig it out of there. Right, and the honey is a preservative, so nothing mm -hmm. gets into it, mm -hmm. uh, and, and it is good, it's just a good thing. Okay. And the honey is anti antiviral too, antimicrobial. Mm. So that's okay. What about coconut? 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 Not a delivery? Coconut? I know it's antiviral, the, anti. Um, if you if you can make a smooth coconut smoothie and put herbs in it, that's that's the way to do it. Yeah. Okay. So um, back to the three treasures. So you remember, remember the dream, the the the, wa the the candle analogy, this being like the wax, the candle. So out of out of the lung and spleen herbs. Out of, the, out of the super gene herbs, only goji berries apply to, the, to, to this particular conversation. Mm -hmm. Although, all these herbs you want in your diet, but this is kind of part of a, more of like a kidney workshop. We're getting, to, like last month, we had, what, two months ago, what was last month? Two months ago, we talked about kidneys and, and the liver, so we're talking about these herbs here. Goji berries is the one that applies to the lungs. Mm -hmm. Can you go back to just for a second? Yeah. These, if you can get these six herbs, or, the, or seven of them, including Romania, if you get these seven herbs into your diet, like I was talking about the top 40 herbs, these would be like in the, t in the top 20 out of the top 40. Um, and some of these are in the top five. Like, these are very, very special herbs you want in your diet. Like, yeah, so who, who takes at least, or eats at least two of these? Yeah. Do you, do you? Mm -hmm. no? Okay. Well, hopefully you will be after after today. Yeah. What? Uh, hmm? Do you antler tips? Antler tips. Yeah. That that's on special. <laughs> that's on special. That's on special reserve. Like yeah. yeah. You have to you have to you have to know one of us here what to get the antler tips. Yeah. yeah. What, is, what is it for? Uh, helps with uh, human growth hormone. So it, it, it helps with with that. Yeah. It helps with um, your your nervous system. It helps them with nerve growth factor, which is basically a protein in your brain that helps regrow damaged uh, dendrites and, and axons in the brain. Um, anytime an animal can regenerate a limb, mm. like a gecko or, or a deer, like there's ectosaponins in that food that will help keep your limbs, your uh, joints strong too as well. So uh, if you're working out, you're gonna get, a, get, get a m more muscle tone from your workout. The good stuff is, is not cheap. It's not cheap, but it's 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 worth it. It's worth it. It's for sure. We can talk about how to get it too here as well if you want to try some. All right. So so most of the lung and and the spleen tonic herbs are chi tonics. Okay. So um, this is the fire. This is the fire. So the the belly, the stomach. You create fire in the belly, right? That's the candle, back to the candle, you're creating fire. Astragalus, cordyceps, licorice, wild ginseng, Siberian ginseng, I spelled ginseng wrong. Uh, Cotonopsis, American ginseng, Don Kwai. I have, uh, I'm doing a long tonic in these, so. Uh, goji berries, cordyceps, Cotonopsis, uh, polygala, and uh, wild asparagus root are in, are in there. The other one has kind of stamina instead of cordyceps. So we'll be trying those later on. You guys can, can really feel something special from that. So spleen, lungs, lung spleen, you'll see a lot of these. It's no coincidence that a lot of the herbs that are for the spleen are also for the lungs, right? So out of the shantonic herbs, so this now, now for the light, for creating the light. Uh, you have uh, wild reishi, you have purple, black, red reishi, gynostema, uh, shaga, polygala, and wild asparagus root. Has anybody here tried at least two of these? Yeah, which which two? I think the reishi. Reishi, name. okay. How are how, how your experience doing with reishi? Like, you like reishi? Yeah. Mm -hmm. found this really awesome. It's a honey that has reishi in it, but it has like a bunch of other herbs in it. Too. Okay. It's a special order from some website, but 
It's really good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's. I'll. I'll, I'll want to know about that website. <laughs> All right. So. Uh, so here's a picture of some wild reishi hunters. They just got into the forest. The guy with reishi. Uh, here's a goji berry bush. In case no one has seen a wild one before. And um, the cordyceps mushroom is it's a parasit, parasit, parasite uh, to insects. It basically takes over the nervous systems of caterpillars, silkworms, ants, and it basically turns them into zombies. It, it makes the ant like climb a tree, for example, and it it'll, and to where it can shoot its spores out all over all over the forest uh, canopy. So uh, mushroom nose, in order to get its spores further out. It needs to shoot up from where the wind is, right? I mean, these things are smart. That's why you want to, you want them like in your system. Cordyceps is the most expensive <laughs> piece of produce on the, on the planet. Next to, I think that and wild ginseng are kind of neck and neck. Um, they're, they go for about $900 an ounce in Chinatown for the wild Himalayan uh, cordyceps. The stuff that we have here, unfortunately, is like it's like far, it's like farm grown, like indoor grown on like, on rice or other. Grains, so it's not the wild stuff because they just wild stuff is just too expensive. But it's very special. That's what the Chinese athletes they use the wild cordyceps, the stuff that's like nine hundred dollars an ounce. Yeah. Um. <laughs> okay. So now a little bit about immunity. Um, basically, two things you 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 want you have control over, generally speaking. Like not completely, I understand, but to the most part, you can control stress and viruses, right? If you can control stress and viruses, your immune system is going to be in the top one percent. You'll be a one percenter when it comes to immunity if you can control stress and viruses. Um, stress damages your, your B cells because the, the steroids your body's release when you're under stress. So B cells are basically what what, what get taken out when someone has AIDS, for example. So like. Like when you, when you get a when you get a cold due to stress, it's similar with somebody someone has AIDS experiencing, just on, on, a, on a chemical level. Uh, viruses will uh, exhaust your T cells, and so your thymus gland won't can't keep up with making new T cells. And your thymus gland, when you're a teenager, is about the size of a, of a pear, small pear, and it gets down to about the size of a date when you're when you're 50. So it's, it's already shrinking just, just through age. So you don't want to do anything that's going to overload uh, your, your T cells. So keeping the viruses down. So here's a, here are the herbs. Um, the one in red is the one that's not associated with the lungs, the spleen. But the other five here, Ganostemma, Stragglers, Goju, Reishi, Ginseng, are all herbs that are going to help uh, keep your virus load down. Okay, so. So bone marrow. So, are you guys familiar with kind of the cool stuff that's happening with stem cell um, therapies and nutrition? So we're now finding out that a lot of these tonic herbs that have been around forever are actually helping the bone marrow get, stay juicy and produce stem cells. Mm -hmm. Stem cells then become blood cells or immune cells, or they become other tissues that are damaged in the body. So not all Stragglers uh, products will help you with uh, with stem cells, but. Uh, this particular Astragalize 4 compound will, and that stuff is still very expensive. Um, but Hoshu, good, good Hoshu, like the stuff we have here from drag, Dragon Herbs, uh, the Deer Antler, Eucomia, Ant, are all things that are going to help with stem cells. This is, the reason why every infection is more dangerous for somebody who's over 50 in any, any cold or any, any type of uh, virus is because they have less stem cells. So, less adult, adult stem cells circulating in their body, so which means they have less fresh immune cells to combat the virus. So anything you can do to get your bone marrow uh, healthy and create new stem cells, that's the leverage point. That's the, that's the big button you want to be pressing for, for longevity. So, uh, Opoisimo and some other people uh, like us are have a vision of, of creating tonic bars throughout the U.S. So this is a tonic bar in L.A., Robertson Boulevard, Dragon Herb Delicious Bar. So basically, imagine you go instead of going to like a club or a bar where they're serving uh, recreational alcohol, mm -hmm. like the bad the bad stuff. 
right? You go into a tonic bar, you still got, they still got a DJ, they still go <laughs> having fun, hanging out, socializing, but here they're, they're dispensing deer antler, shizandra, hoshuwu, ginseng, and stragglers. That's, that's what they're doing actually at this place, oh, right? No, no, we, we didn't have that. We didn't have that. No, 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 no not even close. No, but we're, we're trying, but not even close. Like, spirulina is not deer out there. I mean, they're just, they're just, they're just they're not on the same, on the same wavelength. Um, but ironically, there's a kava bar now. They just opened up two weeks ago in Berkeley. The Mellow Mellow Kava Bar, a 1701. Very elegant. Like, it's, it's plush in there. Like, no alcohol. They're doing, they're doing, they're doing kava herbs, right? Uh, so there's a one open that just opened up as well too. So we're gonna be doing a tonic bar across the street. There used to be a bar across the street, uh, and that's gonna be now a healing center that Azalea Green Soul Solutions. They're taking that space across the street in the corner. So the, the corner, the yeah. corner building. Yeah. So we're gonna be doing pop-up tonic bars there. They're gonna be doing other other healing things there as well. So like basically we're just kind of creating the groundswell for this for this manifestation to to come forward. But, um, so this is right now, this is the prototype in California of like having it down right. And their menu is available to anybody who wants to copy it. So like, we're gonna probably work with, with some, of their, some of their products. So imagine like, like the young people that are like never, they're almost 10 years old, they've never drank, all, they never drank recreationally to get drunk. And the only reason they will 15 years from now is because they have nothing else to do. Mm -hmm. Basically, that's it, right? But if they have something else to do, and, they, and if they, if they drink, the more they drink, the better they feel. Like, with alcohol, it's, kind of, it's, it's the other way. The more you drink, the worse. When you get to like a point that it gets worse and worse, the next day it's even worse. Here it's like you drink, you drink, you get better and better, and the next day you feel even better than the day before you, you went out. So that, that's kind of the idea. Right. Okay, so this is the book. You look at where to start. Ancient Wisdom of Chinese Tonic Herbs. This is kind of like the baseline. Uh, yeah, that's, that's whose bar that is. The, the bar I showed you, that's Tea Gardens Bar in, in LA. LA is actually kind of like leading, leading like what kind of Northwest L LA County is kind of leading the charge on these, on these tonic bars right now. Okay, so I'm almost done here. Hopefully someone's gonna come up. Uh, this is basically the main reason why I'm into this is uh, the expansion of consciousness, and uh, as you t bring more tonic herbs into your body, you will find that your capacity to have your thoughts, emotions, and actions in alignment to be more consistent. So, a lot of times we we have thoughts, we have our, we have emotions, but our actions are not consistent with what we're thinking and what we're feeling. Right? We're doing things that are not in the align in alignment. The idea is to get into alignment. You want your actions, your emotions, and your thoughts to always be consistent, to always be synchronized, and never contradicting one another. At that point, you're able to merge your left and your right brain and get into a state of balanced contemplation and experience truth, love, and freedom for yourself. Is that it? I'll just leave it on. I'll just leave it on there. Just, 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 just. Mm -hmm. All right. My name is Okoye uh, Sambo Ifa Um So basically, when we um, talk about the spleen and the lungs, the lungs itself are very, very powerful, like you were talking about earlier. Specifically, the lungs are powerful because when you are breathing, most people, when they get tense, when they get anxiety, when they get stressed, they do this. They start to breathe from here only. Right? And so literally, when you're breathing from the, the diaphragm, you're breathing from the stomach, and you're expanding, and you're starting to bring in air, right? then you start to circulate the system a lot easier. The brain function starts to happen a lot easier. Um, digestion, just to, uh, first and foremost, the most basic time to eat heavy foods is between 11 a.m. and 3.34 at the latest, because Anytime after that, your metabolism is slower. Anytime after that, your body is already starting to slow down, wants to go to sleep, it's time to stop for the course of the day. Your body starts to um, be drained of all this energy, right? Um, and so when you're eating things that are heavy, 
foods, mucus forming foods, anything that kind of weighs your system down, causes inflammation in your joints, causes like sinuses, causes like, uh, like obstructions or acid reflux or you know um, stagnant, like I was talking to someone, if you're, at, you're not make, getting bowel movements three hours after you eat a full meal, then your body is not digesting that food. That food is basically just stuck in that same position. So if you're going a few days without going, having a good bowel movement, then that's a problem. That's a big problem, right? And so, the most important things, think about when you were a child. When you were a child, you smell things first, right? There's a reason why you smell it first. Or, for example, when you look, in, look inside a, a restaurant, you see this really good food through the window. Or you see, like, um, things that are exciting or you remember these, these memories in your brain where you start to think about good food that your, your mother made or your grandmother made or whoever that's special to you in your life, right? Or somebody somewhere that you went, special. It all resides here first, right? In your mind, in your brain. So when you bring it in, first your thoughts, smell, sight, and then that other part, that digestive part of it. But all of that starts first with the, uh, the sight of the food, the smell of the food. Um, so that's why it's so, so important. We're talking about the lungs. When we're breathing in all these other excess chemicals in the air, whether it be cigarettes, whether it be any kind of carbon monoxide producing anything, any smoke, except for mullen, and maybe uh, say sometimes just because to clear if you have bronchitis or anything like that, just to break it up, right? But beyond that, any other fire bring to the back of the throat is hard on the body. It's leaching your body a minute. Uh, mullen, and mullen, sage, clove, sage. Mm -hmm, things like that. Only for when you have bronchitis. Mm -hmm. Because after that, your body, if it takes in that, it starts to leach itself a, a, a bunch of minerals, a bunch of nutrients that your body needs, mm -hmm. craves. And that's why we eat. We eat for the nutrient value, for the minerals, the trace minerals. We eat to have our body balanced. And that's what we have to think about in all aspects of it, is balance. One of my teachers in uh, Nigeria, um, when he went into his shrine, sometimes he would have certain herbs burning that he would use. But the herbs itself, smelling, seeing the herb, opened up a different kind of understanding. And then, then burning it, smelling the herb, before it even gets into your system as far as like fully digesting it, is a whole different kind of way of experiencing tonic herbs. Because tonic herbs not only ingest it, in the way that we understand tonic herbs to be. Uh, because there's multiple cultures throughout the world. For me, most of my, my training has been uh, in Nigeria. Uh, with my teacher, uh, uh, practice Ifa, a traditional system of the Yoruba people. Uh, in Ghana, uh, in Burkina Faso, all these in West Africa. Uh, also through my three, four generations of uh, my grandmothers, my grandfathers. Um, in Louisiana, here in, the, uh, in California. Um, and then in urban gardens, teaching in the urban gardens. Because when you know the, the nature of a plant, how it grows, how this thing functions, right? How it breathes. So those plants breathe, that's how they survive. They get the same nutrients we need in our, their, their body, just like we need the same nutrients in our body, right? Because they're taking in these things, they're taking in the sun, they're taking in the air, they're taking in the nutrients from the earth. The roots go all the way down. For example, alfalfa, one of the herbs that we're going to do today. Sometimes those roots go hundreds of miles into the ground. And there's a reason why it does that. Because it's searching out those key elements, those key nutrients that our body needs to survive for itself and for us. The chlorophyll that it gets. Alfalfa gets chlorophyll from the sun. So again, we're talking about two different poles. One from the earth, from the sun, and the things we take in with our breath, our sight, our emotions. Mm -hmm. All of those things are things that we express and how we take in medicine. So, basically, we're talking about the spleen and the lungs, and also you have to, have to include the stomach. Because before you get to the lungs, the lungs bring in that energy, right? Right? Brings in the brings in the, to the breath of life, right? Synergy is already there. You're just recycling these things that's coming coming into your nose, or in your mouth, and so you open gates. And then you're expelling them. 
But the spleen itself, the function of the spleen, basically, is that when you put something in your mouth, right, it stimulates all your salivary glands underneath your tongue, in your jaws, the roof of your mouth. All those things are being stimulated because it's starting that process of digestion, right? But once that thing gets into your, to your stomach, right, it starts to bring that same energy back up to your mouth, right, from the spleen. So the spleen gets its energy from the stomach, and then it goes to the spleen, and then it goes to the mouth. So that's why when you do any kind of tongue di um, diagnosis, you're looking at those things that the spleen is bringing up, right? The tip of the tongue is typically the, the heart, right? So the, and then the, the middle of the tongue is talking about the, the center, right? And then the, the back of the tongue is talking about the root, basically. So you're talking about all these aspects of your system that are constantly being stimulated, consistently. So let me grab a, a uh, I, I, either you come up, or I'm gonna grab it. <laughs> Grab a, uh, a volunteer from the audience, anybody, okay. come on up. Because it's really important, again, when you're actively doing something, that you're pushing your hands on it, all your senses, and that's really what we're talking about, so sensory. So all these 16 nerves, it changes specifically with the seasons, or d uh, depending on what's going on with your body, depending on how your body is assimilating with it, what issues are going on in your system, how your body is actually have, having to function. All right, so we're talking about the stomach. The stomach also has so many different kinds of uh, levels of how it digests, how it functions, how it lives. Because every part of our body has its own distinctive energy. Every part of our body has its own distinctive uh, type of rhythm that it goes off of. Because that's the, what it is, when you're smelling, when you're breathing, when you're talking, sometimes, and you know, I'm talking a lot right now, but sometimes, not sometimes, all the time, when you are doing any kind of spleen, your spleen energy is very depleted, and you're rebuilding that spleen chi, or the stomach chi, a lot of times you don't want to talk. You want to keep it very quiet and calm. Because again, these things are, are working on all different parts of your body, so you want your body to be rooted. And so when you're talking, you're releasing chi. You're releasing that, that same energy that you want to hold in, that you want to build up within yourself. Um, this, is, this is not rooted in any one culture. The things that I, I've experienced is from West Africa and from the States. This could be in Mexico. This could be in China. This could be in India. This could be anywhere in the world. Because specifically the herbs that are in your space that you've lived in, that are surrounding you, all the things that, like for example, eucalyptus is uh, acclimated to this environment now, right? Um, but the herbs that are in that environment are particular to you. Like American ginseng is particular to the people that are living in this environment. Uva Erzi, those fennel, all those things that are, are growing in this environment. So when you take that in, then you begin to experience those things from this environment. So, with this one, okay, so, cardamom. Actually, let's get one more. One more. Can I, can I ask you to clarify something about what you just said? Was that, are you saying that it's best to take the herbs of the environment around you then? If they're grown here, or if they're, like if you're getting herbs from other places, that's fine as well. Because I, I do tonic herbs. I do tonics whether it be uh, through uh, de a decoction form or through uh, putting it in honey, putting it in apple cider vinegar, putting it in other areas and ways to take it in. But the best results that you're going to get in your body is you're getting herbs that are from your environment. Now these mm -hmm. herbs, some of these herbs are not, obviously are not grown here. You can grow thyme here, you can grow alfalfa here, you can grow a lot of different other herbs here. Um, but my point is that when you are taking that herb in that's specifically grown in your environment, then you're able to really assimilate it in a different kind of way. Mm. So, yes, I, I study herbs from many different other cultures. I, don't, I, I never say that I'm a, a Chinese herbalist because I don't study Chinese herbalists. I use the herbs, just like Chinese herbalists use herbs from different, many different cultures and using them in their tonics, right? Same principle. 
I study Ifa, but I'm, I'm using these herbs in the way that I, I that the guidelines to where I've learned. And so that's the same kind of concept. So, cardamom. Cardamom is very, 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 very powerful herb for mm -hmm. numerous different reasons. Cardamom, A, has, has uh, magnesium, has potassium, has iron, has zinc, has high vitamin C, right? So when you smell it, immediately it gets into your system. You know exactly what's going on. And all you need is half a teaspoon. with somebody. If you're giving it to somebody, you also do it yourself. It's like you give me poison. That's right. And, uh, somebody gives you a tonic, he's like, you, yeah, you drink first. <laughs> All right. So, cardamom. Cardamom is very, very powerful. When you smell it, if it goes up your nose, it goes up your nose, but we're not snorting it. That's not the idea we're trying to accomplish. Okay, just making sure. All right. So again, when you're breathing, you want a deep guttural breath. So your stomach is expanding. So truthfully, if you're really getting a good, good uh, breath, you're standing uh, full length apart, but you can be sitting, you can be laying when you're breathing as far as breathing wise. But with this, making sure that you're, you're rooted, right? And you're breathing from your stomach. So in your nose, out of your nose. Because breathe out your mouth, you start to lose a lot of that same energy that we're talking about, right? So like when you're running or anything like that, you start to lose a lot of that same chi that you want to retain. That's why you breathe through your nose. So breathe through your stomach. Now your stomach. So take a deep, deep breath. So that automatically goes through here, right? So before you even get up to your brain, it's getting into your nose, into the center. It's like these little hairs in your nose that are, are like responding, receptors in your nose. Then as it goes through the nose and all the cavities in the nose, it goes up to the brain. As it gets to the brain, it gets to these points where almost like antennae, right? They're receptors right here, right around in here. So when they, they receive, they're receiving the information, then it goes from there and changes it into, gets into the nervous system. Once it gets in the nervous system, it gets down and around to all the corresponding organs in the body. That's why we breathe it first. Again, I'm talking a lot, so I'm breathing everything out, right? But, so when you're breathing it in, deep guttural breath, and then wait for a moment, and then lick it. You're not licking the whole thing up. You're just taking a small percentage. Again, you're, you're stimulating the salivary glands in your mouth. So then after that, cumin. Cumin. Beautiful herb. Weight loss for diabetics, for um, also your, uh, stimulate your immune system. Um, it's really good for digestion as well as cardamom is good for your digestion. Back up a little bit. Cardamom is also good for because of magnesium content, for your bones, relaxing, calming your system, calming your mind. In the same way, cumin is doing similar properties. So when you add these herbs together, you start with one and you're getting one response. You're putting the next one on. You're getting, you're blending these things and getting a different response because now there's two different herbs that are similar in nature, but then expand a little further. Uh, cumin is my favorite herb to cook with, so does it break down some of the composition of the enzyme when you cook it instead of having it raw? Mm -hmm. It all depends. Yeah, when you're, you're cooking it, I'm getting it. When you're cooking it, automatically the heat will break it down unless it's, it's coming in form of a seed. Like I wouldn't put the this, I mean you could, but I wouldn't do it at high temperatures. I would do more of the seed inside a stew. I would do more of a, those kind of things because A, it's going to release the, uh, the energy of that herb as it is in the water. Right? And it has the same taste too. Right. Okay. Yeah. And so, same thing, going deep, 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 deep in the system.
And so another good thing, when you're breathing it in, you're holding that point right between the anus and the genitals, right? You're, you're holding it tight as you're breathing it in. Because in that way, it's pulling, it's drawing back into your system, right? And then as you breathe out, you start to breathe that out, and your stomach starts to recede in. Feeling all right? You good? All right. Take a look. So now, clove. Anybody knows about clove, you know that it's A, it's antimicrobial, antiviral, antiseptic. It's really good for, in, in clove, actually this time, clove, take off my hat. Clove is uh, also really good to put on, really if you take um, a, the oil, a little bit better, but you put at the tip of your head, right where you were a baby, that small, that uh, in soft spot mm -hmm. when you were a baby, mm -hmm. right? Again, if you use the oil, it'll, it'll get into the system a lot quicker. But if you use the, the, um, the powder, it'll also get into your system. <laughs> My mom used to keep it under her tongue. Yep. For, for breath. Like exactly, for breath. <laughs> exactly. And so now, when you're doing that, like first thing in the morning, I'll get up, I start to uh, breathe, and then I'll take uh, obviously some dose and other things, but put something to the tip of my head so that again, it clears your head. It pulls out toxins out your body. Hmm. Um, and so in the other side of that, is putting this, again, antimicrobial, antiviral, um, helps with like the um, flushing your system out, the smell again. Anybody ever smelled clove before, you know exactly, it just gets into your nostrils and just takes over, right? And there's a reason. Just like when you hear or you get some um, garlic, the smell of garlic is going to do what? It's going to get right in your nose. Or onion. Onion is going to get in your nose and do exactly what it's meant to do for a reason because that smell automatically hits a different part of your body. And they did research. So while I'm doing this, while I'm talking, you can go through there, mix it together, and smell. But there's been research on animals and humans alike. When you are, there's so many different smells that we like have to discriminate to get to the smells that we're, we're seeking to connect to. And so when we, we smell, our sense of smell, we bring it in. And then, uh, whether it be pheromones, I'm seeing somebody I'm attracted to, so my pheromones are, are up and out, right? Or their pheromones are coming out and I'm smelling them to a greater degree. You smell your, your mate. And then when you are getting to another level, you're getting into where you're discerning the smells that are opening you up to a connection to that person or to yourself. A memory. You're remembering, remembering things together, piecing these members together in your brain. So memory, thought, process. And so again, we, we start to put these members or, or elements together of different herbs together you start to put these different kinds of members in your body and they start to disseminate into where they're going but now there is a connective between the, uh, the different energies of each of the herbs and that's how it assembles. Now if you get that in one walk, you're good. Because it opens it up. But you're not only smelling the cumin and the, uh, the cardamom, you can't barely smell the cardamom anymore. Because it starts to get masked by the, the clove. Fenugreek. Fenugreek is, is such a good herb for so many things. Going back to cardamom again. Again, I'm making association to most of these herbs. Flushing the lymphatic system. Right? Fenugreek flushes the lymphatic system. Fenugreek is also good for the mammary glands in women. Right? If they're producing milk, lactating mothers. Right? But then if you're not lactating, it also works with your mammary glands. Also works with your hormones. Right? Also works with like uh, inflammation, excess mucus, the throat, the lungs, right? Helping you to like breathe smoother, easier. Inflammation. Amongst many other things. So so far this is all stuff that is in kitchery. Is that very, or? very simple. <laughs> so what my point is that use the things that are, are here in front of you. You're using your, your food. Your food is your medicine. 
when it's cooked in something like that, is it kind of like what you were saying? It, does, it, does it lose the... To a certain degree, depending on how you're cooking it. Because if you're doing it like this, you're not going to lose anything, right? But if you use it in like, a, for example, in a curry, some of these, these are in curries. So if you put it in a curry form, then you're mixing together, putting the things together, maybe rubbing the chicken or rubbing the whatever, and then you're putting it in there and you're cooking it and then you're taking it out. So generally, for me anyway, what I do, I, I have the meat or whatever I'm cooking and I'll do that first. I'll, I'll steam it or cook it or whatever it may be if it's meat. And then I'll, I'll put the, the things on there. Mm -hmm. And then I'll, I'll put that into my food. Because in that way, it's already got this flavor to it. And, and sometimes if you take those herbs, like for example, garlic or any of these other herbs, you put them in water overnight. Then that flavor is in that water. Yeah. Then you put that inside of, you know, at, on top of your food. Because then it starts to, you know, have that same function as you would have before without losing any of its properties. Mm -hmm. well, what about the Thai heat and tea? Like a lot of cultures mm -hmm. use their carbon mm -hmm. and clove and tea. And so for me, I, I warm is better. Warm is always better than hot. That's why first thing in the morning, you don't drink hot water in the morning. You drink warm water in the morning, right? You drink, um, so when I put any of my herbs together, I put them in warm water or lukewarm water, right? So it may have been, it's getting the, the everything inside of the water, then stir it in, let this water cool down so the egg can assimilate with your body because you can't assimilate with your body if it's too hot. You're gonna react to it. It's gonna get into your system, but you're gonna react to it. It's not gonna, you're not gonna be able to bring it in. Unless you're doing it in a way that you're you're uh, smelling, and that's the other aspect. If you're smelling these herbs through the ha the heat, then that's different. Because in that way, you're opening up a different dynamic on what you're you're trying to accomplish. Because now you're you're taking these herbs. Like for example, if you had a cold, a flu, you put Vicks rub on, or you have a, a, a bowl of hot water, and you're putting these herbs in the water. You're putting your uh, vaporizer. You're putting that that towel over your head. You're bringing these into your lungs into your nose, into your lungs, into your chest, into your body. And then that's when it's able to get out of your body. It's, about, it's just ready to, you're sweating. You're getting all these other, other aspects uh, of toxins out your system. And that's when you're talking about that protective chi, right? That protective chi in and around your body where it's helping your body to fight off and defend anything that's coming to you, externally or internally. Mm. Smelling the taste already? Do you have some medical tea for high blood pressure? There is a good one for high blood pressure. There is, um, this shawoo that we talked about early before. Um, there is uh, sage good for high blood pressure. <coughs> There's a few different herbs that are really good for high blood pressure. <laughs> fennel. Now fennel mm. is similar to fenugreek. Right? Very similar in character, very similar in taste almost to a certain degree. And it grows very easily in the Bay Area. It grows wild all over the Bay, all over California. Something you can pick when it's right. Some places I wouldn't pick it, but some places I could. You know what you can do. This is that one of those things that kind of blow into the backyard and then it starts just growing. Don't cut it down. If you do cut it down, you know, put it into a stew. Put it into something that you can dry out and use. Because again, it's getting all those excess mucus out your system. It's good for digestion. It's good for your uh, your uh, inflammation in your, your sinuses. Really yet? Not talking. <laughs> so, coriander. Coriander, again, all the things you can find in your spice cabinet. Anything in your spice cabinet. Make it simple, make it easy. Things that you can kind of easily connect to. And then you're going to do it. You know, start small, grow big. This is big. Coriander deals with your. Uh, it's an anti-inflammatory. It's good for muscle pain, pushing out excess mucus as well. Also stimulate the immune system. So, so you start to see a pattern. Most of these things are basically some of the same kind of properties. And again, once you open up that, that pathway of what you, you're doing and how you're doing it, 
then it gives you like another way of uh, experiencing each of these herbs outside the context of I'm only going to put this in my food. This is my medicine. This is how I live. This is how I'm physically um, putting into my daily routine. I may have some of this in and just smell it, right? I may, like rue, rue is one of those other herbs, ruta is one of those other herbs that you smell, that flushes your body out, that protects your body, internally and externally. Mm -hmm. Better question? <clears throat> oh, what was the last herb you said? Coriander. Oh, no, no, but rue. Oh, rue, rue is not part of this, but rue is another one that oh, okay. is really good for pushing out parasites. You can make a tea. Rue is really good for, uh, for the uh, menstrual cycle, regulating the menstrual cycle. Rue is good for like really flushing, uh, calming the nerves. It can be euphoric if you do too much, but it, should, it keeps you like really just calm and center. And it pushes uh, R U E. So take a deep breath. You start feeling it in your joints, you start feeling it on top of your head, in your stomach, in your lungs. It heats up the body, it warms the body in your joints, in your knees, in your feet. Uh, the next one is thyme. Thyme. Tomato, tomato. Uh, thyme is antimicrobial, antiviral. Thyme is also good antibiotic, uh, good antiseptic. Uh, it's really good for if you have really bad inflammation. It's really good if you have any kind of like um, the right, right, this and fenugreek together, but just that alone is good for like really bad migraines, oh. mm -hmm. joint pains. Time and fenugreek. Yeah, really good. In combination, you can do any of these combinations in, in general, but that in particular is really good together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you say what time is going to Antiviral. Antiseptic, antibiotic, um, antimicrobial. Uh, it's good for inflammation, draining uh, excess mucus out of your system, and for your sin um, sinuses, uh, for your throat, for uh, anything that's constrictive. So it's an uh, anti uh, antihistamine. It's a natural antihistamine. So that means basically your immune, your immune response, immune, <laughs> immune response uh, to the um, the allergy, or well, it could be pollen, could be something like that, some kind of allergy that comes to your system that your system automatically wants to reject and, and encompass and put up, it excites it, and that histamine gets inside your system and overloads, so it's, your throat starts to constrict, mm -hmm. your nose starts to constrict, different parts of your body, so that, that's where... Um, Things like this, right along with fever fuel. But another good one. That's the same kind of thing. We did time already. Turmeric. Now, who knows about turmeric? Nobody knows about turmeric? Nobody Nobody's eats good. it? Nobody ever ate it? Okay. <laughs> turmeric is good. Right along with any of these other combinations of these herbs. And that's why you find it in curry. That's why you find it in different foods. That's why it's good just as the root of itself. Because it's, again, anti-inflammatory. Anti-viral, to a certain degree. Uh, it's really good um, immune stimulator. Right? Um, and then, turmeric also helps your body to uh, give you uh, a sense of, like, calmness, too. Have you ever eaten curry? Because it's a spicy thing. It gets into your system immediately, so it's stimulating your system. And then it calms you down in a certain degree, right? It calms your stomach down. Rose hips. Rose hips. Rose hips. Vitamin A. Something that people don't usually associate with rose hips. That's high vitamin A. Which vitamin for the most vitamin A we have in our body? In our liver. Right? What is vitamin A good for? Hair, skin, eyes, nails. Right? Toxifying the body. What, what else does uh, uh, rose hips have? Vitamin C. High in vitamin C. High 
higher than oranges or any citrus. Um, and so smelling it just gives kind of a sweet smell to the, uh, to the process and it kind of gives your body a, um, it calms, it gives like a nice uh, balance in your tongue because again you want to get hit those different kind of flavors in your mouth. Sweet, sour, stringent, pungent, all those things that your body's kind of, it's salty, needs in its, its system associated with different organs in your body. So again when you're smelling these things, what does it do? It, it deals with these different uh, ang angles of your body. How your body assimilates it. How your body deals with it. Where does it go? Antioxidants. Huh? Just remembering mental notes. And again, one herb, depending on the process. Now that's the other side of that that really needs to be understood. Is because there are herbs that are processed and herbs that are not processed. Process in this sense is not a bad thing. Because, for example, you take Heshaw root, which we were talking about earlier, right? Heshaw root, a raw Heshaw root, is only good for, it's a, it's a bitter. It's only good for digesting constipation. It doesn't have any other properties other than that connected to it, when it's a raw herb. But when you put that with um, black, uh, black beans, inside of a stew with the black beans, the water black beans, and the Heshaw root, then you break that down. You start to, it, it goes all the way out. You, uh, most of the times when we get Heshaw root, that's what they're getting. You're getting that form, the prepared form. It uh, boils all the way out, and then it's drawing out different properties of that herb. Same thing with uh, stragglers. There's a stragglers that is raw, and there's a stragglers that's, that's prepared. <clears throat> Pan fried with honey, and many other ways to prepare these herbs. So think about that too. There's never just one way to approach an herb. When it, so when it's listed in, in the combinational formula, then figure out what specifically is that formula. What are they saying in that formula? How, is a, how are the herbs prepared? Because if you use astragalus without it being prepared, you're not going to get the same kind of effects as generally you see with astragalus. Rosemary. Who knows what rosemary is good for? Memory. Memory, uh-huh. Yep, memory. Uh, good for the joints. Good for uh, antifungal, antimicrobial. Good for pushing out parasites and all those other little critters in our body that does not need to be there <laughs> at all. Uh, it's also good <laughs> for um, our system when we are, like, just smelling it calming your nerves down, mm -hmm. relaxing your body. Anti-inflammatory, again, going back to that again, said it twice because it's very important. When you deal with that, when you're able to smell it, and it goes in your nose, and it goes to the same process we talked about earlier, being at all the excess mucus in. <laughs> and so when you, it goes to your body, then it starts to spark memory. You start to have these uh, associations with these things. You start to have the things when it's strengthening the, the mental function. That's why rosemary. That's why heshawu. That's why uh, uh, even polygala. Polygala is another good memory herb. Amazing for dreams. Mm. What's it, polygala? Polygala. Yeah, that's How one of the things. P O L Y G A L A. Or U N G. U N G is the uh, the Chinese name. But polygala. So rosemary, rosemary. Yeah. Chickweed. Now, chickweed, I'm, I'm rushing through these because, you know, time and whatever. Chickweed is a herb, and we have a lot of herbs to cover. Uh, chickweed is a nutrient. We have so many. Uh, chickweed is so nutrient based. It has high calcium. Hide all of your trace minerals in chickweed. That's why it's really good. Feed your body nutrients. So that's why when somebody's seeking to lose weight, they can use chickweed. When somebody's seeking to strengthen or stimulate the liver or the gallbladder, they use chickweed. Chickweed also externally, bug bites, bee stings. You make a poultice out of these things. You put it directly on the any kind of inflammation externally. Chickweed is good for it. Snake bites. Any of those kinds of things. You said it strengthens the liver. 
Uh, it, the liver, and it deals with also the gallbladder. Oh. Yep, because that bile stimulates that bile, so bitter. And then, cat's claw. Now, cat's claw I don't usually put in there, but we don't have the other herb that we generally put in there. So, with cat's claw, which, which would be go to cola? Uh, uh, go to cola, just to talk about that briefly. Go to cola is an herb that is basically uh, brings oxygen to the extremities of the body, natural antihistamine again. Right? Good for the heart vessels. Right? Good for memory. Really good for the memory. Because it brings oxygen to the brain. Anything bring oxygen to the brain. And how do you bring oxygen to the brain? Exactly. Exactly. Cast claw, natural anti uh, anti uh, infection. Uh, it's good for if you have any kind of <laughs> It's good for if you have any kind of infection, good for, for any kind of um, stress-related things that's going on in your body, good for any kind of, if you have any cold, if you have any flu, if you have anything that's going on in your system that you need to, to rectify in, in a very quick way. Like, for example, I had, uh, when I first came back into the country um, from Burkina Faso, which is in West Africa, I had, um, I went, I had hepatitis A from the water, right? And so when I took that, cast claw, cast claw was helping my inflamed liver to repair itself. So it's helping to repair the body. It's helping to stimulate the body, to help it to uh, bring to its highest um, uh, immune or optimal level of uh, living. I'm generalizing because you know I'm rushing at the same time. Kind of a bitter too, and that's primarily why it's stimulating those things as well. Mm. Any bitters really good for the body. Bitters are like amazing because again, stimulates the body, stimulates the liver, stimulates uh, other organs in your body that seek out that bitter. Mm. The smells, the textures, the flavors. I'm saying it like that because when you start to look at those herbs, they really look at those things. How do you connect to those things? How do you live with those things? How do you rebuild those things in your system? So, talk about dose. D-U-L-S-E, dose. Dose is amazing. Just like any other sea vegetable. Kelp, Irish moss, um, any, of those, any kind of sea vegetable. Power pack with nutrients. Iodine. Iodine is good for your thyroid. Thyroid is dealing with your adrenal glands. Thyroid is dealing with your uh, managing your weight. Thyroid is dealing with your immune system. Thyroid is dealing with so many fatigue. Th thyroid is dealing with every aspect of your body to a certain degree. Right? Uh, also has all your trace minerals. B complex. B12. Has all your electrolytes. So what does electrolytes do? They rehydrate your body. You may not have to get that you know energy water. Same. <laughs> So take a deep, deep breath. <laughs> Curious, like how much of these things do you need? Like on a like dose, for example, how much to get to get the you can cook with benefits. It. Usually okay. I start I start in the morning with a teaspoon and a half and I do four cups of water. You know what I'm saying? I do four cups of water, four cups of warm water, and then I drink that, right? Then I put this in my foods. I put this in my stews. I put this, it's in a regular routine throughout the course of the day. You can drink this throughout the course of the day. There was an elder that came to, uh, to the food mill when I first started working here in 97, 98. Um, and it was a, um, it was a um, <clears throat> elder from Ireland. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, this elder from Ireland, she said she used to go out, she was like 98 years old. <coughs> she used to go out and harvest a lot of the dose and eat it throughout the course of the day because it would give you abundance of energy. When you eat that, your body is at its optimal level. Mm. Adrenal fatigue, take some dose. <laughs> <laughs> Issues with like bowels, that's what I take when I go outside the country. I take this in gradual form uh, and the leaf. I take that and then I put that underneath my tongue and I take some uh, olive leaf extract which is a powerful immune builder. 
amongst many other things. <coughs> then, uh, it, I don't have any digestive issues, no diarrhea. So I learned that after the first time I gave that. <laughs> Push it because that iodine content, you know, because electrolytes keep your body hydrated, keep things flowing, keep your body balanced. And so the next one, before I say it and take it, is sage. Sage, just like, I'm going to use this analogy because I don't want you to use white sage that you burn. Completely different. Don't eat that. I said it loud and clear. Okay. Curly sage, common sage, any of those kinds of sages are really good for your system because it's, it's adds the same thing as the sage that you burn. It purifies the inside of your body. It's like it purifies the space. It purifies every aspect of your body. And women, if you are, again, Lactating, seeking to have to have milk. You take sage when you are ready to stop that milk. Balancing out your hormones. <coughs> Lung issues, as I call it. And uh, things good for your throat. Good for uh, memory. Good for antifungal, antimicrobial, uh, antivermal. Uh, uh, good for anti, uh, it's natural antihistamine. Uh, it's good. It's just again one of those things that purify your body mm -hmm. from memory, specifically because it's helping your body to uh, flush out all the any. Uh, it's a good antioxidant. Going back to that, a lot of these things have good antioxidant properties. Pushing out the free radicals. So when you cook with sage, what we, what would you recommend? The powder or the dry herb or the? All depends the on how how hot and what what are you physically cooking? Because if you're taking the the physical plant. Because it's more water soluble. Even the, the, the leaf itself is water soluble. But if you take, like, for example, um, you take coriander seed, or it's water soluble to a certain degree, or like a, um, a jujube, uh, anything that's not water soluble, that's a hard, that the water can't easily extract the nutrients from. You can't steep it, right? Okay? Just get it. Those are things that you uh, would have to cook for long periods of time, like extractors, hishawu, anything, roots, barks, seeds that are not water soluble, leaves that are not water soluble, like mag magnolia leaves, are not water soluble. So you would have to make it and get it into a process. And that's what I was talking about earlier, the process of the herb. <clears throat> now, ginger. Ginger, prepared ginger, unprepared ginger. Two different functions, right? Prepare ginger with honey, prepare ginger with vinegar, prepare ginger with uh, just raw ginger, whole different thing. You put honey with ginger, it's more accessible to the throat, easy to go down the throat, easy to assimilate with your body, right? You have raw ginger, it's more accurate, it's more potent, right? It's more, it gets into, it's like a, a stimulating your body for the digestion and digestion only, amongst other things. Uh, anti-inflammatory properties. But it, 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 it's, I couldn't stress that enough that how you prepare the herb is how the herb physically works. It's not one size fits all. Mm -hmm. So you can have a, uh, a uh, mandarin orange which has six different herbs in it. Six distinctive different herbs in that one mandarin orange. The seed inside of the, uh, the rind and the, the, the white inside of the rind, the peel, the, uh, the the, the small, um, I forget what you call that, I'm blanking right now. Uh, the, the other white part that, that sticks in, inside uh, on the fruit. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then the actual uh, actual fruit. A few more spaces in that, depending on what kind of, where you're getting it from, the source. But a bunch of different kinds of things. Are you, are you burning it? Are you uh, steaming it? Are you cooking it? Some herbs are not meant to be cooked at all because it's a whole different process. So now, ginger. Digestion. This is not the favorite because we really want to get that pungentness in our nose. We really want to smell what we're dealing with. Also good for uh, stimulating the immune system as well. Mm -hmm. And then we only have one more. So 
So, in that way, taking it, <clears throat> building it into your system, combining it with these other herbs. Now, there's a reason why you can do ginger and, and, and honey and ginger and turmeric or ginger and, um, and chicken, for example, or ginger and certain other kind of foods. It stimulates and gets into the, uh, the bloodstream quickly. Right? It's a catalyst. Right? Just like uh, cinnamon is. It's a catalyst. Bounces out your blood sugar. I got a question for you. Mm -hmm. What's ginger good for? I just said it. It's ginger is really good for the digestion. Oh, okay. Ginger is really good for uh, stimulating uh, the immune system. Ginger is really good for if you do have like some um, some kinds of infections in certain places of your body, right? It's good. It's good for external use. If you're making it into a poultice, if you have like a, a like warts. Same thing with sage. Same thing with rosemary. Same thing with uh, rose hips, turmeric. A lot of these other herbs. They're also for external and internal use. So, next one, alfalfa. Alfalfa, 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 alfalfa. You can never have enough alfalfa, just like you can never have enough time. So alfalfa, specifically, is so amazing because, again, those roots, I know I'm talking a lot, I'm supposed to be quiet, right? But those roots are like, go so deep into the earth that A, it's taken from the sun, that's why it's bringing the chlorophyll in. Chlorophyll builds the blood, flushes the body, very close to your own blood, hemoglobin, right? High in iron. B12. Not many plants have B12. We talked about those having B12. We talked about um, other seed vegetables that have B12 in it, right? Um, but this has B12, all your B complex. It has all of your um, uh, trace minerals. Because again, the, the roots go way down into the earth. Uh, so, you can also use this externally, you can also use this as it gives you energy, it gives you, uh, if you're seeking to get rid of like any kind of toxins in your body, if you're seeking to get rid of any kind of metals in your body, if you're seeking to get rid of any kind of excess, uh, uh, excess minerals or excess um, in phlegm in your system, any of those things are really good to do that because again, what is it doing? It's feeding your body. So, again, it's, it, it's like a multivitamin in a plant. So you would recommend tincture or what? Uh, I would recommend a plant. You can do tincture, and tincture would get into your system a lot quicker because it's, a, it's in that liquid form. But the plant is, is like key. Because, I, you know, I, I just, I mean... You can put it in a salad or something? Yeah, you can put it in a salad, you can put it in stews, put it in ice cream if you want to. But I wouldn't eat ice cream. Ice cream is bad for your system. <laughs> so, so that's, these are the ones that we deal with specifically. There's a good book if you're looking for anything. It's kind of technical. This is a book that I like, I like to go in and look at things. Uh, Treatises of Spleen and Stomach. This is uh, really good. This, what this is, this was like um, a, they, they redid it. They translated it into English recently. Um, but it's a good, herb, a good book because it really breaks down in uh, layman's terms how do you function with the spleen and what, what part does the stomach play and the mm -hmm. spleen play in your immune system, in the, uh, in the uh, upkeep of your body. Most of the things that we think are dealing with uh, external issues are really internal through your spleen and, and your stomach. Can I see that? What's the name of the book? Uh, treaties of the spleen, on the spleen and stomach. So okay, it gives like case. Oh, cool, it gives case studies. It gives um, breaks down how and when uh, these things start developing your body. Why your body needs to uh, acclimate to certain things and environments in certain kinds of ways. Like we were talking about earlier, how your body really begins to to be rooted, to be focused. Is all this? Is all this stuff also? Appropriate for children, or do you have? Is there like a? Children eat curry, yes. <laughs> Some. <laughs> that, but so my point is that these are foods. Uh huh. These are all foods. These are all accessible foods. 
anybody can eat at any point in time, hmm. right? And so that's why I, I look to, like to look at it from that perspective of putting it into your daily routine. This is not some external or extra. It's not something outside of, this is my life, and this is the life when I'm in pain or in trouble. Hmm. This is my life consistently. Hmm. Because then you do it that way, it's part of your everyday routine. Hmm. It's part of your everyday life. So this is the kicker. You ready? Ready? All of it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh my gosh. It's too much. Alfalfa. Now I got too much alfalfa. You're in RD. Water. Oh my gosh. So these are some of the other herbs that we deal with. I got some another. That are good for the spleen. Do you be? Spicy. Mm -hmm. Jujube yeah. is, is really good because A, it builds up the blood like we talked about earlier, right? Um, it helps uh, stimulate the immune system. Jujube also helps with like uh, sweetening up if you're taking valerian. Okay? So a combination of what I use jujube in, uh, right along with uh, goji berries for example, right? Now goji berries and jujubes but together, let me back up. Uh, goji berries are good for stimulation in the heart, hormones, right? It's good for the pineal gland, pituitary gland, thyroid, mm -hmm. right? Moistening the lungs. So if you're taking any kind of, also this does the same thing, moistens the lungs. Um, if you take anything that's drying you out because you have a flu or a cold or anything like that, you take this with that because then it moistens your lungs back up mm -hmm. in a proper way. Right? Because again, stimulating the immune system, flushing it out, and then helping you rebalance. So if you took something like blue plurium, 